ओम सहना सहन ओ भुन सह वीर परवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिद्विषावह ओ शाति 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 ओ सदाशिवसरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ नमस्ते अस्तु भगवन्श्वराय महादेवाय त्र्यंबकाय त्रिपुराय त्रिकाय काद्रा नीलकंठाय मृत्युंजयाय सर्वेराय सदाशिवाय श्रीमन्महादेवाय नम समस्त जन कल्याणे निरत करुणय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर हरिओं सो इन दुद्राष्टक वे फाइंड द फर्स्ट टू वर्सेस स्पीक मोर अबाउट द निर्गुण निराकार रूप ऑफ भगवान शिवा थर्ड एंड फोर्थ वर्स वी सी दैट द फॉर्म ऑफ भगवान इज डिस्क्राइब सो यस्टे वी सॉ तुषाराद्रि संकाश गौरम गभीरम भगवान कॉम्प्लेक्शन इज वाइट लाइक द स्नो ऑन द माउंटेन्स ही इज वेरी डीप एंड ही इज like uh, resplendent more than crores of kamdes he is more resplendent than that and he has ganga ji on his uh, jata there is a snake on his uh, neck then there is a crescent moon now that form continues in the fourth verse also चलत्कुंडल भ्रूसु नेत्र विशाल प्रसन्नानन नीलकंठम दयाल मृगाधीश चर्माबर मुंडमाल प्रिय शंकर सर्वनाथ भजा सो चलत्कुंडल इस कुंडल और द इयर रिंग्स आर they are moving they are shaking chalat kundalam bhagwan has in different uh, descriptions are given sometimes it is said his kundals are uh, the snakes But then sometimes it is rudraksha sometimes it is some uh, metal ornament so different places different expressions are there so chalat kundalam <clears throat> bhru his eyebrows are beautiful wide long so sunetram vishalam and his eyes also are big eyes lotus like lotus petals like that सो चलत कुंडल भ्रू सुनेत्र विशाल सो वॉट इज द डीपर मीनिंग हियर सो हाउ एफर्टलेसली वी कैन मूव द ब्रोस इट इज क्वाइट टू मच एफर्ट फॉर जस्ट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मूव वन बाय वन बाय यू नो ओनली मूव द वन आई ब्रो एंड नॉट मूव द अदर वन येस that may take some effort but otherwise we have to just move the eyebrows effortlessly and so it is said that the whole srishti sthiti samhara the creation sustenance destruction all this happens as effortlessly by bhagwan as moving the eyebrow so Bhru eyebrows. So one is there just a description of eyebrows that yes, Bhagwan has eyebrows. 
but otherwise it means it's called bhrikuti vilas the whole act of creation sustenance and destruction is the bhrikuti vilas of bhagwan and what is the point of understanding that that for bhagwan when we understand the entire srishti sthiti samhara is bhrikuti vilas we are holding on to one small little ego of ours and little things that we do as though we have done something very great and then we feel tired exhausted also at the end of it bhagwan does the whole srishti sthiti samhara effortlessly most powerful is the lord so one must have shraddha that that bhagwan is with me is in my heart infinite source of strength is in my heart <clears throat> infinite source of power is in my heart so why should one feel weak alone feel that i am not up to the mark <clears throat> so that is bhru then chalat kundalam so if you see actually bhagwan's full form there are quite a few things moving you know the more we think about it you 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 try have something moving on your body how weird it will feel continuously something is moving on the body you know bhagwan's hair on the head there is ganga ji flowing continuous movement is there there are snakes around on the neck neck also snakes are there here also snakes are there so if something is moving amidst all that movement is sitting steadily and still there is no disturbance in the mind steady contemplation absorption in the truth so being steadfast amidst whatever changes happen that is the quality indicated chalat kundalam bhru sunetram very vast eyes bhagwan has so eyes represent the vision so what we see physically is one aspect but what is our vision yesterday we saw that bhagwan is gabhiram so the vision of compassion the vision of oneness that all this is divine that vision so do the eyes are two and only the physical description is given that the eyes are vast of the big eyes bhagwan has the point to understand is bhagwan sees everyone with the vision of equality there is no superiority there is no inferiority because all are one like the vision that we have there are different parts of the body but we feel all this is me so no part of the body is inferior for us you know guru they used to joke and if i ask you that where i should i poke the pin in this body you will go through the whole body saying no no not in the head not in the neck not in the hands not in the stomach not in the leg nowhere so no no don't poke my pin no don't poke the pin anywhere in my body if at all you have to poke you poke it to the neighbor why because that is not me so identification is with the full body though there is diversity there are different parts and different things they are doing their functions are different but the vision is i am one this is me that vision one has for the whole world that the entire srishti is me alone that is the advaita vision so bhru means the vishala netram means that <clears throat> चलत कुंडल भ्रू सुनेत्र विशाल प्रसन्ना भगवान्सन्न 
is not cribbing, complaining, grumbling, sad, depressed, anxious, worried, stressed, tensed, nothing. Prasannananam. He, on his face, there is so much of joy, happiness that is reflecting. Why? Because it is an inner joy. Bhagavan is absorbed in the Absolute Truth, Satchidananda Swarupa. So one who is Ananda Swarupa, it will reflect in actions, in the expressions, in the speech, on the face, in the body language. Prasannananam. If I am a devotee of Bhagavan, if I am walking the spiritual path, then I should be like this. Prasannananam. Otherwise, even following spirituality, one feels so uh, as though burdened by life, troubled by life. Yes, there is challenge, there are, there are challenges, there are problems, no doubt, but we can still be prasannananam when we have this anchoring in spiritual knowledge. In fact, that's the one of the signs of progress of spiritual knowledge is that that even when things go wrong, how much is my balance, how much is my strength to uh, deal with it without feeling overwhelmed and how much can I remain happy? Is that not a prog is that not a measure of our spiritual progress which will inspire people also that hey, this person you look at him, look at her, how is this person so calm, composed, facing life with such courage? Is he happy? Nothing to crave and complain and worry and gossip and stress and none of that. I also want to be like this. So spiritual knowledge should give us that ability to face life boldly, courageously, confidently and be calm in and through all disturbances. Then one has one has anchored well. How was Prahladji in this whole episode of Hiranyakashipu and how he was trying to kill him? You look at so many saints. Mirabai was given poison. Tukaramji was insulted so much and his entire pothi, whatever, abhangs, so many beautiful things he has written, they have put it in the river. Brahmana, so jealous, took the whole thing, put it in the river. Calm, no problem. The river brought it up fully. Eknath Maharaj, people went, that one person went and spat on him so many times. No reaction. Sattva Guna is like that. Rasannam. This is the joy born not out of contact with sense objects. Vishayendriya Sanyoga. It is not that. It is the joy of the self. Rasannananam. It can be the joy of devotion when we serve Bhagavan. The simple principle of happiness is put aside the ego. That's all. When we see a glorious sunrise, our beautiful river is flowing, or you know, birds are flying, chirping, anything in nature, we see something beautiful, glorious, divine. Then we feel so exalted, uplifted, because for that moment we have put aside the ego. This can happen with so many things. For someone, music, one is so absorbed in music, one forgets oneself, one feels joy. Bhagwan has no identification with BMI. Free from ego, very happy. Somebody gave the nice acronym of ego. Ego means what? Edging goodness out. So if ego is there, goodness is not there. Goodness is not there, happiness is not there. Simple formula. Goodness equal to happiness. That is Sattva Guna. Cunningness is equal to sorrow. Today in Kali Yuga, that equation is Ulta. Cunningness equal to happiness. Goodness equal to sorrow. Is what we think. 
but the universal principles apply at all times. They remain the same. Goodness is happiness. Cunningness will only bring sorrow, insecurity, misery. So, prasanna ananam. Then, prasanna ananam, nila kantham dayalam. So, nila kantha, Bhagawan has the blue neck. So, yesterday we saw that how Bhagawan sent Vasuki for the churning of the ocean. And when the ocean was being churned by the Devatas and Asuras, then the poison comes out. Halahal wish comes out. Vasuki also is spitting it out. And that poison, the very fumes of that are dangerous and people are uh, fainting, unconscious. And they all run to Shivji saying, you please help us. And so Shivji takes the poison, drinks it and it is said Mother Parvati holds his neck so it remains here, becomes his ornament. So that poison Neela Kantham, symbol of Bhagwan's compassion. And you see how the Devatas, they go to Bhagwan when there is a problem and Bhagwan helps them. Bhagwan doesn't say, what will you give me in return? Why should I do this for you? He helps them. Because Prasannananam, who is very blissful, doesn't need anything for happiness. And very selfless. So goodness is there, happiness is there, selflessness is there. He served, took the poison. When the Amrit came out, they don't go to Bhagwan. They don't give it to Bhagwan saying, you helped us at that time. So, that is the mindset of the world. The world will be like that. The good person who is anchored within doesn't even bother, doesn't say that these people are so ungrateful, next time I will not even help them. One's nature is to help, one will do. Of course, if they do something adharmic, then one is not going to support them. But otherwise, one does it out of the joy of seva, out of the joy of oneness. You know, Gurudev is to give the same example of the body and he would say that if the calf is scratching, then the hands go and scratch at the calf. The hands don't ask, what will you give me for scratching? Because there is oneness. The mother doesn't ask the child, what will you give me in return? I am giving birth to you. Mother is loving, gives birth to the child, takes care of the child, makes him or her grow up. So many things. All because one sees oneself. So, Neela Kantham, Bhagwan helped Devtas to get Amrit. And that's why it is said, Amrit Peekar Jo Amar Hai, Wohe Dev. Vish Peekar Bhi Jo Amar Hai, Wohe Mahadev. Bhagwan is immortal, even after taking wish, poison in his head, in his neck. And he is holding it. You try holding little saliva in the mouth. <laughs> it's not easy to hold. And it keeps coming. Then one feels what to do now. One has to swallow. In the mouth I am saying, here Bhagwan is holding that in his neck. He drank it and it's there in the neck. So, Bhagwan holds that poison, symbolic of his compassion and uh, selfless service and no craving for recognition. Such beautiful qualities these are. When we think of Bhagwan, when we contemplate on the form, we internalize these qualities that may we serve the society selflessly out of the feeling of oneness. Nobody is doing any favor to anybody. We are not helping somebody out there who is different from us. We are helping ourselves only. Same thing, we are not 
If we hurt somebody, we are not hurting anybody else. We are hurting ourselves. Just that we don't know that. So that vision of oneness, any seva that we do also will be uh, full of joy when we have this vision of oneness. Otherwise, what happens in seva also, I need recognition. I need praise. I have likes and dislikes. I prefer to work with some people. I don't like some people. Then where is seva in that? I am again stuck with Raga and Dvesha. I am again stuck with the need for recognition which will boost my ego. Seva is done to burst my ego. And the ego will use that Seva only to boost itself. If it comes unasked, somebody is praising, it's all right. Nobody is saying no. But we crave sometimes. I did so much, they didn't even acknowledge my name. Gurudev used to joke in one talk, he says, you know, that some ladies came to him and told him that uh, they are serving in a particular institution and they go there once a week and uh, do some seva. And Gurudev was so happy, he encouraged them, he said, very good, that is very uh, purifying and helping, etc. Then after a few months, Again, when Gurudev met them, he said, Hey, you are going there, your seva, how is it going? So the ladies, they said, Swamiji, we stopped going there. They don't even send a jeep and we go there on our own. They don't give one, give one cup of tea and they all are having tea. They didn't give us one cup of tea. So we stopped going there. So Gurudev used to joke saying, So you went there for one cup of tea. If you went there for one cup of tea, you are cheaper than the porter. But the porter charges $10 to lift the uh, luggage. And you went for one cup of tea. Meaning what? You serve out of the joy of serving. What you need? Appreciation and praise and recognition. Yes, that organization, if they are doing discrimination that way, then that's a different matter to be dealt with. But the point here is, my attitude is what? Do I do things for recognition? Bhagwan didn't bother. He served because there is a vision of oneness. There is no question, what's in it for me? Today we ask that question so many times. What's in it for me? Why should I do? With our own family, we do that. Think about that. Forget anybody else. In our one's own family, for one's children, parents, you know, siblings, joint family, if it is there, then others also, uh, uncle and aunt and all of them. There only we make groups. Why should I do it for them? What did they do for me? How much calculativeness? So, Dilakantham, Dayalam, full of compassion. Bhagavan's compassion only, we get opportunities for satsang. If we go, if Bhagavan gave only the karma fala to us, we would never get satsang only. He is most compassionate. Even when he punishes, it is with compassion only. He doesn't want the jiva to suffer. Why? Because jiva is him only in another form. Even if he kills, he kills with compassion. He gives mukti to the demon who has got killed. Asura who has got killed. So, Dayalam, most compassionate, kind, good, selfless, having the vision of oneness. So, if you go by the, the words there, Bhrush, Sunetram, Vishalam, one who has the vision of oneness, who has large eyes, who sees everyone with that attitude of oneness, automatically Prasannananam, Nilakantham, Dayalam happens. You will see this in all great masters also. Gurudev also saw everyone with the vision of oneness. So, Prasannananam lives in happiness. No matter what is the condition of the body, mind, intellect, he is living in happiness. Nilakantham, how many people cursed him for talking in English? In the initial stages, 
and uh, giving this knowledge to everybody without any barrier of caste creed community gender nationality language he gave freely to all and very compassionate so many times working with a master like gurudev whose standards are so high whose level of uh, motive inspiration whose commitment unprecedented exemplary and uh, where where are we where is he we will keep making mistakes so many mistakes compassionately taking along making us grow so all these qualities are reflected prasannananam nilakantham dayalam then mrgadhisha charmambaram mundamalam mrgadhisha here is lion so it can be lion tiger so this tiger skin bhagwan wears on his neck uh, sorry on his chest or you may see even the asan uh, tiger skin he doesn't go and kill a tiger for that some of the animal right activists they may say what is this they want to be compassionate a tiger how the tiger skin uh bhagwan came to use there's a story we will come to that so uh nagadesha charmambaram tiger is symbol of aggression rajoguna and one who has mastered rajoguna ambition uh, greed attachment activity is not restless bhagwan is calm and still and centered when he has to do action activity he will do activity also but there is no inner restlessness that no i should do something i should do something i can't sit quietly that is not there that is the meaning of that bhagadhisha charmam baram mundamalam he is wearing mundamala so mundamala why is bhagwan wearing different reasons are given one is to make us understand that what is this body this is made up of only some bones flesh blood all that and the nature of reality is in nature of this samsara is impermanence impermanence change death that is the nature of this samsara so wearing that mundamala bhagwan gives that message that indication that don't be so attached to the body to the realm of change shiva is changeless he is the substratum the mundamala is bhagwan is wearing he is the substratum on which the change is happening we have to focus on the substratum that is one meaning second meaning given here is one one munda one one head is indication of one cycle of creation and bhagwan is wearing that type of a mala maybe some 50 60 100 munda mala 100 uh, heads are there in that meaning in and through continuous cycles of creation also bhagwan does not get affected by it he is the lord srishti sthiti samhara anugraha tirobhuta and anugraha these are five panchakrityas of bhagwan shiva srishti sthiti samhara we know creation sustenance destruction then tirobhuta bhagwan is as though covered one doesn't recognize him though he is all pervasive and it is only through anugraha that his true nature is revealed and one comes to realize oh this is a shiva tattva which is the cause of which is the substratum of this creation sustenance and destruction and that is my true self so each munda represents one cycle of creation so bhagwan wears munda mala so mrgadesha charmambaram munda malam it is to indicate vairagya 
नो अटैचमेंट टू द बॉडी एंकर्ड इन डिटैचमेंट सो भगवान हैज सो मेनी फैक्टर्स इंडिकेटिंग वैराग्य टू आस ही लिव्स इन स्मशान अप्लाइज भस्म ऑल ओवर द बॉडी मुंड माला ही इज हैविंग देर इज पॉइजन इन द नेक देर इज स्नेक अराउंड हिज नेक ऑल सिंबल्स ऑफ वैराग्य Even the Vrajadisha Charmam Baram, the tiger skin that Bhagwan is wearing is also symbol of vairagya only. Why? Because when there is vairagya, one is able to sit quietly. When the mind has no vairagya, it has delusion, it is craving for sense pleasure. It will run here and there. That mind, even in meditation, why does our mind wander? Because vairagya is lacking. Bhakti is lacking. So the more vairagya one has, the more the mind will be quiet, steady, contemplative, and prasanna nana, absorbed in the truth, fearless. Munda mala also signifies fearlessness and immortality. Bhagwan is wearing munda mala. He is not affected by death and destruction. Vityun jaya he is. So many different things about munda mala. सो मृगाधीश चर्मा मुंडमा देन प्रिय शंकर सर्वनाथम भजा भगवान इज वेरी लविंग प्रिय एंड ही इज लवड बाय हिज डिवोटी प्रिय शंकर सो शम करोति शंकर वन हु is auspicious is shankara one who brings auspiciousness also is shankara sham karayati iti shankara so this is so bhagwan brings auspiciousness so when we see the form of bhagwan we feel so many so called inauspicious things are there in the form poison is there snake is there tiger skin is there bhasma is there and that bhasma is not scented vibhuti that we get <laughs> that is literal bhasma of the cremation ground so many factors that we associate with inauspiciousness bhagwan has all of them and yet he is auspicious to all why because none of those he doesn't he is beyond auspiciousness in auspiciousness none of those limit him in fact those are his ornaments decoration they adorn him with the deeper values and so bhagwan is anchored in all of those brings auspiciousness to all priyam shankaram he is loving he is compassionate you see in this one shloka how many beautiful qualities he is priyam loving Shankaram brings auspiciousness. Dayalam very compassionate. Nilakantham out of so much of compassion he has taken the poison, saved the world. So Priyam Shankaram. Now this word uh, Shankara also has one more meaning. And what is that meaning? That. Um, र इन शंकर र स्टैंड फॉर फायर शंकर सो आई मीन एक्जैक्टली नॉट बाय ओनली संस्कृत टर्मिनोलॉजी एटिमोलॉजी बट शंका इन डाउट शंकर सो सर्व शंका दाहक शंकर वन हू बर्न्स ऑल द डाउट्स इज शंकर सो बर्न्स ऑल द डाउट्स मीन्स so uh, different uh, ways to understand bhagwan is the adi guru he is the giver of self knowledge and he destroys the doubts <clears throat> so dakshina murti bhagwan just by showing this gnana mudra destroyed the doubts of the sanat kumars chitram vatataror mule vridha shishya guru yuva guru astu maunam vyakhyanam shishya astu chinna samshaya 
This is the beautiful picture. What? Vatataror Mule. Below the Vatavriksha. Vridha Shishya Guru Yuva. Disciples are old and uh, Guru is young. Guru to Maunam Vyakhyanam. Guru did not speak one word as though. Mauna Vyakhya. And just by this indication, the doubts of the disciples got dispelled. One who destroys all our doubts. Sarva Shankadaha Katvat Shankaraha. <clears throat> that is one meaning. And so, what is the Shanka? The Shanka is, many times we also have, Swamiji, I am studying Vedanta, you know, but... Uh, I can't feel that I am Brahman. I am convinced intellectually, but I can't feel. That is called Viparit Bhavana, the contrary feeling. So what does Bhagavan do? Indicate this. That what are we supposed to do? Integrate the BMI first. This is body, mind, intellect. Integrate the BMI. And this is the finger of ego. Detach from that BMI. That this is a tool, I am not this. Detach oneself from it. This thumb is a symbol of Brahman, Bhagavan. Surrender. So Bhagavan just showed this and indicated to the Vishis that you may study, but you have to detach, surrender. So those who say in Vedanta, you know, there is no surrender, there is no devotion, there is no bhakti, it is a dry path. That is all stupidity, one has not understood properly. Without Sharanagati, there is no possibility of Jnan. Arjun has to surrender to even get Jnan. Otherwise, he has grown up with Bhagavan Krishna, but he was never given the Jnan till he surrendered and asked, Shishya Steham Shadhimam Tvam Prapannam. And when one surrenders, one gets the knowledge, Using that knowledge, one has to again surrender one's ego completely, drop it in the fire of contemplation that I am not this BMI, I am infinite consciousness. So who destroys Shankar by giving us opportunities to listen, reflect, contemplate and who himself becomes a guru, gives this knowledge to us burns our wrong notions and makes us drop the wrong identification with the BMI is Shankara. Most auspicious is Shiva. So, Shankara, <clears throat> Priyam, Shankaram. Another meaning of Shankara is one who took the form of a mendicant. A mendicant who is a Digambara. In the Daruka one, there were these uh, rishis who were living there, doing rituals and uh, elaborate Vedic rituals. And they had the feeling that we are doing these rituals through that Punya generated and we go to heaven and we enjoy. And our karmas are powerful. They give us the results. And we believe in karma, we believe in action, we believe in doing. And there is no God. Karma gives their karma phala. Bhagwan, out of compassion thought, I should bring them out of delusion. Because uh, if one thinks like this, that will be the downfall of that person. So he comes, when the rishis are doing a ritual, he comes as a mendicant, young mendicant, digambara, there is no clothes. And his form is so handsome, when he goes to the houses of these rishis, the rishi patnis who are there, they come out and they give the bhiksha and they are mesmerized by that form. So he thanks them, takes the bhiksha and he moves. But these ladies start going behind him. And these rishis are very furious that who is this? And why are our wives going behind this? They see on the way, very beautiful lady, Vishnu Bhagwan comes in Mohini Avatar. 
they get carried away by that mohini avatar and they are going behind mohini they are completely flabbergasted gone they are going behind mohini the ladies are going behind uh, bhikshat and rupa bhagwan suddenly mohini disappears from there then the rishi realizes it's all because of that mendicant all this confusion has happened and they are so angry they create out of their powers you know they have siddhis right so they with their powers they create one elephant and they throw at bhagwan bhagwan kills that elephant tears that skin puts it around his waist they throw a tiger at him he destroys the tiger and that is this bhagadesha charmambaram makes that tiger into the asan first actually they throw the tiger he makes it into asan then they throw the elephant he wears it around his waist then they throw the snake he makes it his ornament then they throw a deer he catches the deer and holds in his hand deer is symbolic of our mind so he doesn't kill it he holds many pictures of bhagwan you will see he is having a deer one leg of the deer in his is in, is in his hands so like that when they do all this then suddenly dawns on them that are this is none other than bhagwan himself then they fall at his feet they seek his forgiveness and bhagwan removes their doubts see here also bhagwan did not wait for them to ask a doubt etc he came on his own that is dayalam compassion that they are having a wrong notion and they are living in that wrong notion let me remove them remove the wrong notions in them so the upadesh he gives that how karma is jada how karma can't lead you to the supreme in puranas the story comes and then poet muruganar was writing this conversation he came to this part and then he requested requested ramana maharshi that what is the upadesha that bhagwan shiva gave to the rishis of daruka one can you please write so the 30 verses of upadesha are, are that essence of four yogas in that he starts with that karturagnaya prapyate phalam karma kim param karma tajjanam that how is it that karma is supreme karma is jada karma doesn't know who is a karta karma can't give result on its own there is a infinite consciousness that is bhagwan who is a karma phala data he is kartu by his will only karma can give result karturagnaya prapyate phalam so those who believe work is everything where is god which god i don't believe in god how is your work producing result the laws in the universe are not supreme jiva is not supreme body is not supreme karma is not supreme bhagwan alone is supreme so that is the story for mrigadesha charmambaram and all the some of the things earlier you know the snake on the neck and all that so shankaram one who burns the doubts once you burn it it is reduced to ashes destroyed so shankara is like that bhagwan who destroys becomes the guru comes to our life removes all our sorrows all our doubts priyam shankaram sarvanatham bhajami he is the lord of all the beings i worship that lord so that is a beautiful shloka which we will contemplate on today